sons of life. Hello and welcome back. I know it's been a while. Thank you for being here. And in this video, we'll be looking at how to create this really sexy looking uh, time lapses so you can share your modeling progress online in just a more interesting looking way. And we'll be using techniques commonly used in uh, filmmaking, but I haven't really seen it being used in this kind of way inside a 3D software before. So let's just jump in and see what we can do inside Blender. Now, unfortunately, to do this, you're going to need to have a setup with more than one display. And that's so that you can have one screen where you do all your work and the other one where the whole recording is taking place unobstructed. Now, something else that would have been really, really cool is say if you had more than two displays and Blender could be able to take uh, different active cameras on different windows you'd have been able to capture the same process from different angles at the same time. And if you, ha if you could be able to take that footage and throw them into an editing software, you'd be able to come up with some really, really cool edits. But unfortunately, that's not possible at the moment right now in Blender. So uh, I'll show you how to make the setup on this simple scene and then later on in a more... Uh, in another project, I'll just let it play and let you watch the time lapse. So what I'm going to do here is I'll select this cube and then shift S, cursor to select it so that I can place an empty in the middle of that scene and then I'll just scale it up. And then what I'll do is I'll parent the camera to this empty, control P, control P, object and this is usually just how I when I want to make these turntable animations uh, this is how I usually make that setup and then with that parented if I select the empty and rotate it in the z-axis you'll see how it rotates around the cube and if we went into the camera view and rotated it you'll see the effect that we get so I'll open up a new window inside Blender and then I'll throw this into my secondary screen. And then what I'll do, and this is what that looks like. So I'll come here and move into the camera view. And then I'll try and adjust this view so that my object is nicely centered inside the camera and then also, I don't want this border of the camera to be in the view inside the time lapse. So I'll just scale it up to somewhere like there. And then inside this view, in my secondary display, I'll turn off the extras, I'll turn off the origins, what else? I'll turn off the cursor, 3D cursor, so that I can have that. And then if I rotate the empty, you will see the effect that we have on our secondary display. So the idea that we want to play around with here is we'll be animating the motion of our camera, but the motion will be very, 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 very slow. In fact, it will be barely perceptible. So that say I'll be sitting here for the next one hour uh, making whatever I'll be making. So I want to animate the camera to move very, very slowly so that by the end of my working, I'll have this one hour footage of the camera moving around um, 
my object. And then if I take that footage and then squish it or speed it up, I'll have this effect where the really slow animation in the camera will look like it's in the normal speed. And then now whatever I was doing inside the scene will be sped up. And that's what gives this effect, this really, really cool effect, that kind of contrast between the slow movement of the camera and the sped up movement of your activities inside the scene. So to animate this uh, camera, what I'll do is select this um, empty and then go into the animation workspace. And then I will set this to the graph editor. Let's see, extras. So with this uh, empty selected, I will place a keyframe in the Z rotation. And then I'll come here into the animation modifiers and then set a generator. And if I, if I play this, you'll see the effect that I have. But then it's, it's way too fast. It's too fast. If you zoom way out, you'll see the curve that we, we've created with the generator. And I will slow this down by turning this number way down and remember what we want to do is by the end of the of the session if i speed this up if the motion is perceptible and then i speed my 1 hour footage and try to squish it down to say 5 minutes even this motion will be way too fast it will it will basically look like it will basically look like this so I'll set this to something like 0 0.0002 and see what that looks like. And yeah, I think I think this will work for me. So and then the other thing is because you'll be seated here for like a, a while while doing this, you will just have to make sure that um, the timeline, the frames in your timeline will be long enough to accommodate however long you'll be doing your modeling for. So I'll just set this to a crazy number like 10,000. And you can do the math to see, estimate how long you'll be seated and how many frames you'll need. But I'm just putting in an arbitrary number there. So this I like. I like this. And in the secondary monitor, you'll see this is what it looks like. The camera is moving very, very slowly. You can barely notice it with um, your naked eye. And this for me works. And you might have to play around and see what works for you sometimes, uh, depending on how long of a time lapse you will, you will want and how long you'll be seated there doing your thing. You might have to play around with those variables until you find, until you find like a sweet spot that works for you. And I'm also just animating it this way to just show how you can get this done. But if you really wanted to have a really cool time lapse, you can also play around with how you're animating the camera. But the only thing you have to be careful of is the speed of uh, how fast your camera is moving. But if you wanted to have just a really, really cool time lapse by the time you're done, I encourage you to play around with the types of animation uh, that you're you are putting on your camera. Yeah, that's actually pretty much it. So with that setup, I'll just go and open this um, other blend file that I have here. And I'll just start playing around with this and you can just sit back and watch and have fun.